Welcome, everybody, to the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. How are all of you? I see all the smiley faces there all around the world. Hope you're having a good day today. If you're not, well, then you know this is the place to come for good times, smiles, light, love, levity. And as we coined in the summertime when I said love and levity too fast, Lovity on the Gym Master Show Live. The viewers call themselves the Loveties. You guys watch all around the world. Thanks for all of the sharing and the tagging and the subscribing to the YouTube channel. We love that. All the comments on social media. We've done, believe it or not, over 420 live episodes, seven days a week. Did I sign up for that? <laughs> Seven days a week, uh, and it's been extraordinary. And sometimes we do two shows a day when we have guests that are overseas as well to accommodate their time zones. I see all the smiley faces. I hope you guys are doing well. Again, if you're not having a good day, we're here to put smiles on your face. We've got an extraordinary guest who's joining us live from California, the one and only, the incomparable actress, singer, songwriter extraordinaire, and just an all-around beautiful person inside and out. Rosalind Kind is joining us here, gracing our presence here on the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. If you're joining us for the first time, we certainly welcome you. We welcome all the Lovity viewers. That's what they call themselves, the Loveties from all around the world. And we say thank you for making us a part of your day today. If you're watching live or perhaps you might be watching this later on in the archives, we do encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel that is Gym Masters TV, where you can see, again, over 400 episodes of our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. And uh, click that notification bell so you don't miss any of our episodes live. And sometimes we do host and viewer chat pop-up shows. We take you on location. We do a whole host of incredible things. And, of course, as always, we do it in style. We toast you. Yes, yes, yes. We toast you and we say welcome. It's good to have you with us here on the show and again, whenever I do this, I always feel like I'm supposed to be in church or something doing that whole sort of blessing. So we're blessing you gym master style here on the show. And thank you for joining us. Beautiful weather here along the northeastern coast of the United States. I'm in the greater New York area. That's where we broadcast this show from live daily uh, between New York and Boston along the southern New England coast. It's about 75 degrees, mostly sunny no humidity, and a light coastal breeze. I know if I could bottle it up and share it with the rest of the country, the rest of the world, I would. But that other, that's the weather forecast for where we are right now. And boy, it is something really nice. We had a rainstorm come through not that long ago, and uh, that cooled things off. As I mentioned, we have got an amazing guest. I'm sure you're very familiar with her and her extraordinary voice, her extraordinary talent and her amazing personality. Uh, we're talking about Rosalind Kind um, and we welcome her to the show. Uh, just want to say that I see so many great comments coming in here from our loveties. We're going to show those during the course of the show. We have live viewer interaction on this show. Fans of our show, viewers, loveties, as they call themselves, they comment during the show and they celebrate what we do. They celebrate our guests. And I think that's a beautiful thing. It's one of the things that makes our show unique is the fact that we have this incredible viewer interaction from folks who are watching literally all around the world. So we're going to spotlight and show some of those comments uh, throughout the broadcast and celebrate you as well. But first, we have the incomparable Rosalind Kind joining in here on the show. And again, we're so excited to have her here. Um, 
She grew up, of course, in New York, uh, as I did as well. And uh, she has really made a name for herself over the years. She's a dynamic, multi-talented entertainer who has forged a successful career in all facets of entertainment, from critically acclaimed recordings to sold-out performances on Broadway and in top venues and nightclubs the world over. Rosalind is her very own special creation, a singer-singer whose star shines brightly with its individual sparkling light. Apart from possessing a uniquely sizzling vocal style, she is warm, she is funny. We were just having a couple of laughs before we went live on the air, and I love that. She's joyous, she loves life, she's empathetic, she's compassionate. I love that too about her. She shares that joy with each and every one of her countless fans all the time. A child of the 60s, she began recording her first album on RCA the afternoon of her high school graduation, believe it or not. That first compilation, Give Me You, reflected the music of her time, contemporary pop, which includes Lennon McCartney's Fool on the Hill, Neil Diamond's A Modern Day Version of Love, and Barry Mann and Cynthia Wilde's The Shape of Things to Come. And her follow-up singles and second album, This Is Rosalind Kind, showcased her growth as a recording artist. Her CD, Come What May, described by the New York Times as splendid and sizzling, further establishes her reputation as a virtuoso vocalist, possessing impeccable phrasing and a richness and clarity of tone and undeniable emotional connection to her always first-rate material. We're going to be talking about some current projects and a lot more. Of course, you may also know or might not even know that she is a uh, sister to the incomparable Barbara Streisand as well, and they have a beautiful, wonderful, loving relationship. She's all about family, Rosalind, and I think that's beautiful as well. And let's welcome her live and direct from Los Angeles, California, the wonderful Rosalind Kind. Rosalind, welcome. It's so kind of you to join us. Oh, it's so <laughs> kind of you to have me. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. How are you doing? We have uh, certainly been through some uh, interesting and extraordinary times in our in our lives, Rosalind, and. Uh, what are some things that you've been doing to stay connected and creative, collaborative, and sane? And whenever I say sane, everybody says, well, Jim, I'll get back to you on the sane part. I'm still working on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, during the pandemic, I mean, I was meditating. I did get to do a video for one of my newest releases, Light of Love, via Zoom because uh, I couldn't be in the studio. We had recorded it. I have some others that are backed up waiting to come out. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of the same ilk, and then I'm going into recording some uh, some other songs uh, that are just all about, you know, hopefully about love, because yeah. I'm a big believer in, you know, universal love. Yes, you yeah. are. Yeah, that's that's always been a message for you. And I think it's absolutely it's absolutely beautiful. And we'll talk about some of that, too, and some of the um, transformations you've even experienced in your own life that have been life changing, impactful and beautiful. But first, growing up in Brooklyn, New York, um, there's definitely something in the water in Brooklyn because so much extraordinary talent has come out of Brooklyn. What do you think it is about growing up in New York, the experiences, the multicultural experiences, and all the different people that you come across that enhanced your experience growing up? And, and some of those inspirations, of course, I know your mother, uh, a major influence as your sister Barbara as well, but your mother really uh, an extreme influence in your life and inspiration too, right? Right, my mother is the one who handed us the voice and my sister because she came before me because I'm the baby <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I divvied with whether they even go into the business you know my sister is such an icon she's incredible that uh, that's not even my direction my direction which I didn't even come to know really until I was more adult in my, my adult years because it was my own search that yeah. brought me to where I am today and what I need to share but um, growing up in New York, yes, we were multicultural, our whole neighborhood, every facet of everybody, and the different churches and the synagogues and all the stores and the different foods that I grew up with, all the ethnic tastes, which were wonderful to learn about and to share. 
You know, I, I never thought twice about my neighbors being different or anything, you know. We were, we just grew up having fun in the neighborhood. Every, everybody would uh, sit out their windows. Is that what, did you have that experience in, in Brooklyn? Of it, people would sit out their windows and check on everybody's children. Like Growing up out east way. on uh, Long Island, we it was similar in the suburbs. It was still similar because, and I know when you, you come from Brooklyn or Queens, uh, my father's family, Queens, Astoria area, uh, the the island it was the considered island. it was considered the boon <laughs> the boondocks back there. We're going out. We're going out to the island, the boondocks. But we did. Uh, you know, you could play baseball in the streets mm -hmm. and your, your mother would call out the window, uh, time for supper and very, a real sense of community. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're playing with the kid across the street and yeah. you're, you're, there were block parties back and then, all these different things. Yeah. Handball and potsy and yeah. uh, punch ball. Yeah, we'd climbing we'd trees and sneak. We'd all ride our bike without ever having to cross the street. I mean, we was like Yeah, red light, know? green light, one, two, three, <laughs> and all that. <laughs> yeah, all of that, all of that. Uh and I don't know how much of that goes on anymore. I think we I might be missing the kids could use some of that, I, you know. I believe so. I think they're missing a lot of what we had growing yeah. up. We, we were really kids. Did we you would, do hopscotch too on the city oh, streets? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You the big things of chalk to draw, the chalk to draw. The chalk. <laughs> like, yeah. So, I mean, we, Ring around the rosy, pocket full of posy. Oh I mean. <laughs> it was a, uh, we were living in a complex called Vandevere Estates when I was born. Right. And it was like all of these same buildings, six apartments on each floor, six floors on each building. And yeah. it was, uh, you know, it, it was a community and we had one school on one side of the community and another public school on the other side. So I started, first of all, going to yeshiva uh, because it was very important for my, par for my parents that I know my roots and yes. where I come from. So my first years in school, I was picked up by a bus by Joe, the driver to take me to Yeshiva Rambam on King's Highway. <laughs> yeah. When that ended, I stopped there and I was going to PS 269 on the right, the left side of the community. <laughs> and when I got out of sixth grade, I went for seventh and eighth to PS 89 across the mm -hmm. street before I went to Erasmus for ninth grade and then moved to Manhattan and, uh, and then went to private school here. And I really didn't like it. And I went to, yeah. I finished my last years in Julia Richmond, the country school. You did. Yeah. But, during all of that process growing up with all those great influences, Rosalind, uh, where did the music for you come into play? Obviously, your sister Barbara, you know, was already embarking on a career. Your mother, of course, was a wonderful influence. The family itself. For you, when did you say, you know, I really want to pursue this. I, I really want to take a shot at this. And what were some of those early door opening opportunities for you that really made a big difference? Did you uh, sp start to really participate in school plays and other things yeah, along I, the way too? I was, I was, you know, involved in the glee club and in the choruses and the choirs. Um, I was very shy and yeah. I was an overweight child. So right. I, it was very hard for me to even meet people. Sometimes when new people came to the house, I would go into the bathroom and lock myself in there. <laughs> and and I really didn't have a great self-awareness. Like, what happened to Rosalind? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, it, you know, it, but I, I'd always love to sing. And I had, yeah. I was more of a loner. I had my friends in the neighborhood, but I spent a lot of time alone creating yeah. my own um, stories that I would act out. Your own tell world. That I loved growing up to, like Fury. Do you remember Fury? Sure, like yeah. Nora. And uh, and different things. I would put myself into a script and I would act them out. I was like, you know, <laughs> albums from shows in the mirror. Um, yeah, yeah. And I had my pretend word. I created ballets, the music of Exodus. You know, and yeah. that's, where I, that's where I spent a lot of my time. Um and I really, you know, other than that in school, it wasn't until I was at oh, and singing with the television. I started by watching you know, Davy Crockett on television. I used to oh, sing, yeah. born on a mountaintop in Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Davy. You know, like, that's where it starts. And, you know, your little child songs and your songs. Oh, yeah. 
But it wasn't until, you know, my teens, because I thought in seventh and eighth grade, I thought I was going to be a math teacher. Mm. I was very good in math, and I used to yeah. mark the papers for my teacher when he gave a test. Yeah. And I thought that's where I was going to go. But I always, you know, my side, my little secret life over here was one of singing and, and performing in my own little world. But that really didn't come to the, the fore until after I lost weight and started really feeling serious about and seeing that it can be done because my sister did it. And it's right. not that I was looking to be my, you know, looking for that. I just, I just enjoyed it. It was like, yeah. it was what gave, it, it filled my soul doing so that. Who were some of the artists that you were following and you admired back then at that time that you really, you know, of course your sister was up mm -hmm. and coming, but uh, others as well that you really felt, you know, in tune with. Well, my sister was coming up, but I was also a child of the, of the English invasion. That's right. So aside from the groups like the Beatles and all that, and I, I love the groups. There was Scylla Black, there was Dusty Springfield, there, you know, uh, Mary and Faithful. I mean, it wasn't in the pocket that I'm in. I love Shirley Bassey. When I did oh, the yeah. Bassey, I had to see her in person because I loved the drum. I loved yeah. how she lived her lyric. She lived her story. Yeah. And, um, I probably have a little bit of um, a little bit of what I learned from her in what I do. Also, I don't stop to think about it, but I, you know, you, it's like an influence, right? Right. Uh, from listening to it so much, I used to yeah. like put on her records and look out the window and dream and sing sing the words, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those those were really most of my um, my influences at that time, and then I loved going to theater. Uh, when I, I didn't go to theater before my sister was part of it because I was mm. still in grade school. Right. And, and I loved going to the shows. Um, and it opened a whole new vista for me. But mm. it wasn't until my teen years in high school that I started doing demonstration records for my sister's publishing firm. That's right. Mm. Yeah. And for those who may not know, you, what you do is if somebody uh, brings a song to the publishing firm, and if the publishing firm likes it and wants to take it on, they get somebody to record the song in the studio, and then they send the demo out to other performers to see if they'd like to, to do it. One of the ones I did, my sister did record. Mm, that's amazing. <laughs> so uh, when you were growing up, did you get a chance to see your sister a lot, or was she you know, out, out doing her thing, recording? Was that really? Um, cause she's a little bit older than you then. So, you know, was she out of the house earlier and then in the studios and being called upon often? Well, you know, she left home actually, she moved out after her high school graduation pretty much. And yeah. she graduated early. Yeah. We wanted to get out there and get into Manhattan, you yeah. know, but we would see her. My mother would go to, to New York when she was in shows and bring her cooked food from the mm. house, you know, chicken mm. soup and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. Make sure she ate on the weekend, yeah. you know. But yeah, I mean, I would go to the theater, you know, sometimes when I was a little older because I learned how to travel the uh, subway. My father taught me to be independent. Yes. So I, would, I would learn to ride the subway and I knew the stations and I could go into Manhattan. And I would go, you know, see my sister and go backstage and, and stuff and hang or a little, a little bit, not often because I had school and I had my life. But uh, we did, and we had, you know, we got together as, as a family. We had family dinners and everything. But she was busy. She became, a, you know, a prodigy, and a, she yeah. was becoming worldly. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, you know, yeah. people say, what is it like? What is it like? I said, well, do you have a sibling? It's the same thing. It's <laughs> the same thing. Right, exactly. <laughs> they're only they're on more of a world stage, but, yeah. you know, a family has its ups, its downs, its ins, its outs. But the... The love bond, the blood bond, it will always be there. That's what's solid, right? That never changes. And to know that and to to honor that is really very important, isn't it, Rosalind? It's so important. I'm, I'm one for family. I love my family. I of love course. Family. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm right there with you on that. Uh, people you know, might assume that because your sister's Barbara Streisand, that it was a piece of cake and all the doors were opened for you and you just sort of uh, followed along a shadow, but not at all. You've created, yeah. you carved out your own unique sound and experience 
um, was that easy or were people expecting something from you because of the connection to uh, your sister uh, or were they saying, you know what, let's see what you have to do? Well, you know, I think a lot of people did. You know, I yeah. remember this is a story that somebody told me years ago. Uh, there was this place. Um, oh, my God, the hideaway. I forgot the first name of it, where everybody used to go and eat dinner. And Ed Sullivan would always go there with his wife, Sylvia. And when I was signed to do his show, to make my debut on his show, somebody said to them about my being up there. And his wife, Sylvia, quipped, well, I hope we get the half that sings. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Which is kind of an insult. You know? Yes. Yeah. Well, I don't like the, that term half. Yeah. Because yeah, when you yeah. come from the same womb, especially right. in our religion, the mother's tissue, the mother's, you know, her her womb is the connected gazoit. It's the connected right. tissue. And uh and you're brought up to I, I really I don't know why people have to to constantly like your sisters, if they you know. Yeah, that really bugs me. Yeah, exactly. Right, right, exactly. Your um, sisters, your family, right? Yeah, and you know, and it's funny because the genes are there. <laughs> I was like, I can't escape them. You yes. Know? Um, right. But yeah, people like, oh, is she? You know, will she be? And I, I didn't set out the, the, the world to be my sister. I, you know, I set out to be me and see what I have to offer, and. Um, it, you know, was, I remember my, my debut on Ed Sullivan was February 9th, 1969. I just finished my album at the end of the previous year. And um, what was the point I was going to make here? And, uh, oh, um, oh gosh, I lost my thought. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you call an adult moment. An adult moment. <laughs> it um, happens, it happens. But so, yeah, you, you, Ed Sullivan, and Ed Sullivan. is this where you're sort of carving out your own sound and your well, own? Oh, this, oh, this, thank you very much. Yes. Just, so they were watching me. You know, it was a big blizzard that night, mm -hmm. a huge blizzard. So a lot of people were stuck at home. And some of those who weren't at home were stuck on the train. So they were, you know, but it was really, I remember walking to the theater in the blizzard. But um, bottom line was the press was watching and somebody reviewed me and they said, Barbara was devastating like a high-strung tornado, and Rosalind is inviting like a freshly ripened peach. Wow. So, so different. I mean. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he can yeah. be complimentary to both of us and, you know, and say something, uh, you know, nice and not cause anguish between two people. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly. Or, or competition or sibling yeah. rivalry, all of that. And you've complimented each other beautifully over the years. Um, what was, what would you consider early on for you, Rosalind, that pivotal moment, that pivotal opportunity that sort of took you from this level to now this level and people started to really recognize and appreciate your talent and your passion and your enthusiasm for what you do? Um, gosh. I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to remember that moment because there were there's so many of them. So many of them. Yeah. So many of them. And I remember playing uh, when we moved, first moved to California from New York because all the nightclubs were closing. Yeah. Were, everybody was migrating to Los Angeles. Uh, I came here going to play Las Vegas for a month. And Elvis Presley was in the main showroom. And I like, I walked into the building and they had like, three billboards. He was the main one in the middle, and then they had one on each side, and to the left is it, of his sign, it said, and introducing a new star to Las Vegas, Rosalind Kind. Wow. So that filled my heart. That was so lovely. Yeah, you know, that's incredible. Um, yeah. I, but I think no matter what, it's like until you come into your own. Yes. What you expect from yourself. It, it's not a, well, that was the most awakening moment. Yeah. When I realize why I'm here and why God gave me this talent, these genes, yeah. or, you know, or, and that was the that was what really woke me up. Yeah, to, to why you, I'm here. In this you place. would you say that um, when you were a kid, were you shy, or were you, hey, let's go, folks? You were more shy and, I was and, shy and introverted. Yeah. And, and, and tell us about that. How did you work through that? 
uh, to be able to perform? Was it you were able to just really focus on the performing and that sort of uh, quashed the shyness a little bit? It was almost like uh, therapeutic in a way to be performing? Um, it was hard and it was hard in the beginning. I was a nervous wreck. I was yeah. a when I did it Sullivan, I didn't know where to look in the camera. I was like, I thought I was going cross-eyed. Do, <laughs> like, Do I look in the camera? Because <laughs> right. I was just out of high school and you know, yeah. I didn't, didn't really know. And um, I really, oh, coming out of it, it was like, oh, Lord. Even when I got my, my, my um, record deal with RCA, even yeah. that wasn't where I you know, decide, realized what I had. Yeah. Um, and, and the shyness was still there. And when people would write wonderful things about me, I still had a question because even growing up, I had a mom, God bless her, that never really complimented us. But when, when you did something wrong, you'd hear about it. Yeah. And my father, because I was a late in life child, um, he blew out everything I did to the other extent. Oh, yeah. over, over blew me overboard. I was more than I was. So somewhere in the middle, I had to figure out who really is Rosalind. Who's Rosalind, <laughs> right? Who is she? <laughs> what is she? You know? um, and so that was a job in itself. And I did a lot of, of searching and reading. And I, I came to have friends that were involved in, with the new age and metaphysics yeah. and reading a lot of books about life after death and, and angels and and um, psychic phenomena. Yeah. And in 1984, after I had a failed marriage, yeah. um, I went and I got regressed. Yes. Tell us about that. For those who aren't sure what being regressed is uh, and how that has really uh, just brought a whole new perspective to living and life in a very beautiful and deep way for you. You're a very... You're a very spiritually, very deep person who loves to empower and inspire. You have a wonderful, dry, quick New York wit, which I love. I have that too. And you just really like to, uh, you're definitely somebody who likes to leave the room better than you found it. And you've always been that way. But when you had the, the regression, that really allowed you to fully explore so many elements of who Roslyn is beyond anything that you could probably have ever predicted, right? Oh, definitely, definitely. Because in the beginning, I was a product of right. my worker company, of my management, of whatever. It was like, you got to do this. You got to look like this. I remember my manager telling me, don't wait. I made my debut at the Persian Room in New York when I was 18. And um, he would say, don't dance because you're too heavy. And I was a dancer. I studied with Luigi Lewis. He thought yeah. Luigi wanted me to be a dancer, you know, because um, I, I really was like people like putting it, putting me down, holding me here, and not letting me grow. Right. And um, to find myself, and I mean, I loved. I used to leave school and couldn't wait to get to Luigi's. I took two, two and three classes and come home at midnight and do homework, and my mother would shut the lights out on me. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but the regression, which was unbelievable. I mean, it really brought me to know the experiences that I had earlier when people said to me, oh, thank you for seeing I, when I fall in love, for instance, at this one time in uh, San Francisco. Uh, and I said, why? And they said, well, he proposed when you sang that song, he proposed to me. Mm, and proposed yeah. and they thanked me for it. Yeah. I've had people tell me when I sang about my dog, how that touched them in their hearts because they were having, they had a dog or they, the dog was sick or whatever. And it, you know, it's, it's shared experiences. It's like, you, they know you're human. Right. You're, right. You know, to share your humanity, the, that you're a person, you're like everybody else. You have your ups, your downs, you're learning every day. Every day is a growth day for your soul, for your being, um, for your heart. And, uh, and, and the um, and you're open I, I, and vulnerable. I didn't right? understand. I didn't understand it when I was younger. But my yeah. my being regressed, um, where I was kind of half put under, not totally out, hypnosis wise. I could hear myself talking. Um, she took me back to my beginnings, and I didn't even really see my birth. I went back to only one lifetime, mm. and it was me in Lemuria, which was like the West Coast, Atlantis. 
Yeah. There right. was a man. I was in pantaloons with with uh, with sandals and my head in hair, my head in a turban. And I in the scene that I came to, it was like a scene was I was getting ready to fight a duel over a love between with another man over the woman I loved. Mm. And we have this duel and she accidentally got the sword because she was so close to her. However, she died. And so I lost the love of my life. I lost this love. And I was like, why am I here? Why am I here? And, and then when she did the, um, the words, the association words for that, like what's coming to mind from this yeah. reflection, and it was world, unity, harmony, peace, love. I was meant to be here to bring this. And so I don't know that I will ever find a significant other in my personal life, but I am here to hopefully, hopefully bring the world together, bring the people of the world together. What with a little voice that, that I am, I'm only one little voice, but whatever I can do, my regression gave me my purpose. It taught me my purpose in life. Did you have an idea before the regression what some of that was and did this enhance that or was it just a total eye-opening experience for you, Rosalind? Total eye-opening. And I came from a marriage that didn't work. That I love. And I'm a kind that, you know, I wanted to be happy. You always want the, the, you know, everything, the house with the garden. And you want somebody to love and be loved and make it. Absolutely. And, you know, and I waited till I was in my 30s to marry. So it was like, oh, and it's like, why? Why, dear God? Why sometimes even in show business, I have like a run and then it stops. It's like, and I would look up and say, what are you trying to tell me? Am I supposed what? to be here or am I not supposed to be in this place? Am right. I supposed to be in this business? Am I supposed to sing? Because I'm getting mixed messages. Hello. Yeah. You know? yeah. Anybody <laughs> up there? Are you out to lunch today? Yeah. <laughs> And then it's like you would have a performance or something like this, and it, and it would be like, okay, the answer would come. I was meant to be here because of the response and because of the way the people were reacting, telling, coming to me and telling me how they felt the love in the room, mm -hmm. that they felt that they were in my living room, and yeah. that they shared their experiences with the songs, the music that I that I I sang to them, and I always had a, uh, an empathy towards somebody who was sad in the audience. You could I mean, tell, like an intuitive way yeah. of. Uh, yeah. To this day on the phone, I can tell what's wrong. What's yes. in that? It's like I just pick up on it, and in my audience, I could see, and I would work to that person to make a smile come on their face. Mm. You know, I just it meant so much to me to bring happiness to people's hearts. Could you, you see know? yourself doing any sort of motivational speaking, life coaching, things of that nature? Because it seems that you are so beautifully and perfectly set up for that, that through your music and your extraordinary body of work and all the blood, sweat and tears and all of the recordings and stage performances and television, so much more, you have found something that's even deeper than that commercial success, this mm -hmm. essence of who Roslyn is that you're sharing with the world. Um, I could see you doing that kind of work uh, effortlessly, just connecting with people and uh, sharing. And Because I do that all the time. I do that in my professional work. I do that yeah. personally. We were talking about that when I was right. mentioning driving alone through Death Valley and mm -hmm. some of those cool things that happened then in my life. Uh, you're sort of drawn to uh, the plight of others and to, to provide not sympathy and pity, but empowerment and inspiration. Empowerment. And right. that that's, there's a big difference and it's something very special and important, isn't it? It is. It, it, it's so, so important. I always ask my angels to be there with me to, to bring the, we have to bring the light back from the darkness. We've been stuck in the darkness. Now. Yeah. We really have to, enlighten and lighten the heart and bring people together to know that they we are all alike we have the same blood we may look different on the outside but you should celebrate the differences and learn from differences i welcome I, i'm brought up jewish but i call myself a child of the universe exactly and I, i'm open to other religions to hear because they come from love 
They all come from love and they all, they all, unless they're extremists or whatever, and I don't want to go there at this moment. Right. <laughs> they, we are meant to do that in this world. Yes. We're together. It's like God gave us free will, but I th he didn't mean for us to attack each other. He meant yeah. for us to grow together, be there for each other, be there for this earth, yes. feed it. Feed, you know, he gave man dominion over yes. the animals and the earth. Why are people destroying it? Right. It makes yeah. me so upset when the fracking and the digging and the, the parks and taking things away. And God gave us this beautiful planet, you know, my country to the America, the beautiful, you know, right. the mountains. Why would you destroy this? Right. This is yeah. for all to enjoy and be part of and celebrate. Yes. Right. Exactly. Right. You know, it's like after my, after my regression was, um, the coming of the harmonic convergence in 1987. And so a friend of my, and of myself, we went to Arizona and we climbed Bell Rock at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and we took part of that bringing in the sunrise. Yeah. It was incredible. And all the different groups around the mountain with all the different chanting. Mm. Such a positive experience. That it's must have been art. very invigorating, right? Huh? And that's what inspired my song, The Light of Love. Yes, yes. Tell us about that. You've been, as you mentioned, recording, and uh, that is really a fantastic project. Tell us, you mentioned that's the inspiration. What would, And that's a fantastic shot of you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Tell us about uh, this project, and, and I, this is not just a light of love, but a true labor of love for you as well, huh? Yes, definitely. I mean, I worked with uh, Michael Orlam, my music, my musical director, one of my musical directors, and our friend Judy Quay. Judy and I did lyrics, and it was so funny. It's funny too because we used to get together maybe once a week or whatever, and with the, around the piano, and we would order Chinese food. And this one time we ordered Chinese food, and we said, you know, give us plenty of fortune cookies, and um, and we took a break. We took a break from it, and. Uh, and then we started opening our fortune cookies, and every one of them had the same fortune. <laughs> do you remember what it? Do you remember what it was? No, I can't remember. We died, and Michael got on the phone and said, "You got to bring us more fortune cookies because everyone was the same fortune." <laughs> we would keep it. It wasn't a misprint at the factory. We're going to let it roll that they are giving us a message from above, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, that happened to me once too. I said I can't believe it wasn't four of them. I think it was two or three. Sometimes they toss like a bunch of fortune cookies at you. They have some extra. Right. They say, here you go. A bag, a yeah. bag, and they were all the same. We kept breaking. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. So. <laughs> So this project, again, you worked on this during the pandemic time? Uh, no, Light of Love was actually written in uh, the late 80s, early 90s. Okay, that's right. And, yeah. um, and I did it in my show uh, years ago. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't done it in a while. It wasn't in my new show, but toward the end of doing my new show, which was directed by Richard J. Alexander. Yes. Some of yeah. the, um, I started doing it as the encore. It was between that and... Um, what the world needs now. And it, has it been a re-release or something recently? Is that um, what it is? No, I, no, I never recorded it. I never, never recorded even it. recorded that. No. So wow. it, was, it was like, you know, God's wow. God, why was now perfect. Why is it's like things happen in the moment. So now is when that, you, it's like everything now seems we that's were building, what it is. While we're building yeah. my life is being built toward this you, moment in time. And recorded it now. Uh, did, yeah. Before this one, I put out a cover of Save the Country, which I did in my New Age show. Yes. Um, and that, because of what we were going through in 2016, 15, 16, the last one, I thought that one, I came into my my uh, my uh, producer and I said, Stefan, I th we have to put this one out first. The others have to go on the side. Yes. Country needs help. Yes. The country needs help. We the got country to needs water. help. Yes. And um, and so the, we worked on that one first and put that one out. And then yeah. now we have others waiting. I have another one waiting called Harvest for the World. Um, it's, it's just really, I, 
Yeah, if I could bring people to a mountain and be able to inspire. Yeah, yes. <laughs> when, well, I, when I worked in Las Vegas and uh, Elvis was in the main showroom, I used to talk to a lot of his musicians. Yeah. And what they loved about working with Elvis is that everything, when they would go out with him, was that, quote, happening. Yeah. And when I see this this healing, this inspiration thing, yeah, for, you know, God gave me a gift, whether it's my chords, whether it's what I'm saying with them, whether it's... He, he gifted me. It's not Razi. It's a gift from God. It's a reason he blessed me with this. And I need to use it in the right way to get that message across across this whole universe. Because I do believe in aliens and out of space, and I believe they're watching us. Because the They're Pleiades, taking notes. Honey, I don't want them coming and destroying us before we destroy them. <laughs> you know, it's people have to become enlightened. People have yeah. to learn that love is the answer. It really is. It's not only it a song by Earth, Wind, and Fire. No. <laughs> it is the answer. Yeah. To come to grips. Yeah. With this, open well, your heart. Absolutely right. Open your heart. We all hurt. We yeah. all need the same things. Yeah. No one absolutely. is different. No nope. one. No man is an island. We all bleed red. Yes, nope. we bleed right. Exactly. We put our pant legs on one at a time, you know, uh, absolutely. Well, congratulations on that. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. And recording that after all those years and then this too as well. And then we go back in time a little bit. Uh -huh. Oh, <laughs> look who's, at that hair. Who's that? <laughs> Fantastic. Like yeah. The eyebrows. The eyebrows yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have my eyebrows. I made thin until I did a show in 1981 called Ferguson the Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> you heard my, it here first, folks. <laughs> my friend Ben Court from Harold and Maud fame said to me, you know, all eyebrows, even though they were like Joan Crawford eyebrows, they were perfectly shaped. Yeah. <laughs> they were so thick, it took away from my face. <laughs> now I think they're too thin. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that happens too. <laughs> when it comes a time, they don't grow back in. <laughs> here you go. There's another, another oh, one. Gosh. That was yeah. the first one on RCA. Yeah. What was that experience like? I mean, you know, it had to be exciting, nerve wracking, but also exciting. And did, you know, did they realize your talent and foster it uh, along the way? Did they? Well, I'll know? tell you the truth. I was, I was going around and my manager was having me audition for, for backers because in those days you needed backing even support you are getting into the business if you didn't have if you weren't wealthy right you know to get backing and i was auditioning for record companies and uh the day that i auditioned for rca um in the studio I had to go in in the studio and put, put something down and the man that brought me in who was, who was running the label at the time was named harry jenkins yeah and he was the man who signed elvis presley yes to the label yes and um which was like, you know, the I'm working with Presley in the same hotel. You know, it was like all this <laughs> It was so funny. But, um, and then he got, um, I was in the studio. It was like, I remember them with the press taking pictures. Uh, it was the day of my graduation. My high school graduation was my first day in the studio. Pomp and circumstance at 9 a.m., 12 noon, RCA Studio B when it was still on 24th Street. Wow. And uh, it, it was a whirlwind, but I, I didn't you know, I, I, I was never full of myself. I was always nervous. I was always like, am I, am I that good? Am I this? Yeah. I always, I, to this day, I question myself because every day you, you become better and you have more insight. But is it, I, you know, I don't know that I'm the greatest. I, I am just me. Right. And this is what I want to share. This is my gift and I want to share it. And God willing, Hopefully, it has a positive end in in the world with the people of the world, not for me and my, you know, but for the message. Exactly, for the, message. the message is really deep, Rosalind, and it's so important, and it needs to be heard. And again, the fact that you're, you know, sharing it, and you're doing this extraordinary work in the way that you're doing it is so incredibly beautiful um you know kudos to you and all the great things that are happening in your life uh, i know none of it comes easy sometimes people yeah. think everything is just handed and easy but no not uh, handed you have to work you have to you've got to work and you gotta have 
and you've got to have, and you've got to have luck. You've got to have luck. Yes, you have to have what we say, mazel, because yeah. you can be the greatest before. I'm sure there's tons of people out there who are not getting the opportunity. Yeah, got to have moxie. Yeah, you have to have moxie. And I was never one to push it. I had people around me to push me because yeah. I really didn't. You know, yeah. I never was so full of myself. To this right. day, I'm not. Right. No, no, and that's a beautiful, right. beautiful thing. Um, take a look at this. Yeah, from <laughs> that was my record deal in France. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they spelled my name wrong, Rosaline. <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> they added the e. <laughs> that was in 1984. Oh boy! Look I at this. With uh, with Wea International out of Paris. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. If the love fits. The love fits. If That's the it. love fits, put it on. If it sticks. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Do you have a favorite of all the songs that you've had an opportunity to sing? Because I know as much as you are, I know we've been talking about the singing, but you're a songwriter as well and a wonderful actress. Uh, was there ever a time where the two things, the two worlds competed, um, the singer the actress, were you always the singer first who also is an actress or the actress who happens to be a wonderful singer as well, Rosalind? Well, I always thought of myself as a singer, whereas my sister was always wanted to act and singing was her way to becoming the actress. She the wanted. actress, right. You know, that's what her, was her open door. I always loved to sing, but I learned by living and, you know, doing what I do that you have to if you believe in what you do and you sing from your heart, your lyrics are your three act play within yes. each song. Within right. each song, you, you take people on a journey. They could be crying one minute, laughing the next, you know, uh, but it's how you believe in the story you're telling and that others can relate to it. And so, it's all about the relatability, isn't it? Really, because you're you're a storyteller, aren't you? You're a storyteller first. I love story songs. Yeah, one of my favorites always, and I haven't been doing it lately, but is Meadowlark. Oh yeah, that's what I was. Yeah, I didn't ask. see. It, I did not sing it from the way because it was done in the show, The Baker's yeah. Wife. Yeah, I, I related it to my own life, and I came from my own story when I was telling it. You know. Yeah. And everything. I mean, I, I have a medley of um, Kiss Her Now into, uh, uh, it only takes a moment into Kiss Her Now, two Jerry Herman songs from two different shows. That's a tour de force acting piece. I love putting things together yeah. that have a reason. Right, right. You know, right. that's built to something, build the story that relates to life and people and love. Yeah. Mm. So Meadowlark, what are some others that you uh, really enjoy that are favorites to oh. sing? And are there certain ones people always request that you sing? Uh, they love, um, um, oh God, they love Can You Read My Mind. Oh yeah, yeah. They love Can You Read My Mind from Superman. Yeah. yeah. And um, uh, oh, uh -huh. All That Jazz. Yes. They, they, they write about it. My red hot mama comes out. So that one. <laughs> <laughs> but I love kibitzing with my audience. I talk. Yeah. Yes. Fun. I just, yeah, you know, yeah, I just, you do. I keep with them. I make the, the sexy movements. I just doing anything for you. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I love you know, whatever I can do to put a smile on your heart. But I feel it too. It makes me happy. It fills yeah. my heart. It fills my soul to yeah. be able to share that. It makes it makes me more than I am that that I can share that. What know? are some things you've learned about yourself along the way? It sounds like you've been. It sounds like there's been a lot of teachable moments for you, Rosalind, and you are a lifelong learner. You've always been listening and learning, and. Uh, you know, uh, fine tuning along the way, which is a beautiful thing in, in a very demanding and unpredictable and competitive industry like these industries that we're in, uh, you know, they can really take a lot of energy and time and there, there's ups and downs and rejections, highs and lows and all of this. And you've got to be passionate. You got to love it. You got, 
be resilient. Oh, because the, whether if it's a rejection, that's on you personally because it's you. You are your product. You are your product. You know, and I, I in my career, I've been hit, hit with so many, like, I, you know, negatives from people. Who needs another you-know-who? And who's <laughs> trying to be you-know-who? You yeah, know, yeah. or um, I, I felt like there were some people in the beginning, like, what is she doing on the scene? Why does she think, you know? Yeah. You know, it, it, I had people want to touch me because when I was a kid, because I touched my sister. Because you're related to Barbara. In school, yeah. Kids in school who did not want to know me because of, and people who wanted to be my friend because of. Mm. It's like, how do you delve through all this and through life? And it's lessons. Sometimes there are people in your life you have to say bye-bye to because yes. they're not good for you. They're right. not good for this. Exactly. It's a cycle, and, right? You know, and, and then there are those people who like, Oh, they, they'll, t they'll tell people they know you so well. And somebody will say, oh, so-and-so said they know you. I said, who? You know? Like, yeah. I, when somebody is an acquaintance to me, they are an acquaintance. When they exactly. are my friend, they are my friend. They can be closer friends. That kind of extended family. Yes. But I, I'll never, like, make something more than it is. Right. A lot of people do that. A lot of people do that. Yeah. You know, I just, I, I, I've got to, you know, the old song, I got to be me. Right, exactly, exactly, and and you, I mean, you've just been so great at keeping that and carving that out. Do you, um, do you see yourself doing more acting, taking on more roles, television, film, things of that nature, Broadway? I would love to. I would love to give a te television series. I, yeah. I once had a Paramount, ABC Paramount contract. I did a yeah, yeah. A pilot. Uh, and uh, Joyce Selznick, may she rest in peace. Or, yeah. uh, she brought me in one day to read against two actors that were had, were working on a scene uh, for that whole week already. And she brought me in as the girl. And she says to the guys, "Hey guys, speed it up. Roz is stealing the scene from you." Yeah. <laughs> <And I'm like, laughs> like, you know, she, she would tell me things like, "You may never have to work another night." I said, "Joyce, please. I like my feet on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> I like my feet on the ground." Absolutely. You know, I, that's where I operate from. I'm a Capricorn. I'm, You're Capricorn. I'm, I'm Feet earth. need to be I'm planted. Earth. Up here, spiritual. Yeah. Leader, but the feet need to be planted. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, that, and people, you know, tons of promises throughout your life that don't happen. You've had the rug pull out from under Yes. You. I mean, there are things that could really destroy people if, if they don't have the will or the belief enough in themselves to go on. And it's so and, important. You know. Yeah, it's, it's 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 not an easy world, and I, I know everybody will say, "Well, nobody said it's going to be easy," but no, and they also didn't say it had to be that hard. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, you've got to maneuver, and you've got to keep yourself believing, but believing in a real way, not in a fantasy, not making myself more than I am. Or less right. Than I, you know, it's like I have a hard time of giving myself credit. Yeah. You know that I'm still learning. To do that, yeah, 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 and that, well, it's it, you know it keeps our egos in check. I think it's a beautiful thing that you've always been that way, Rosalind. I want to show you just some of the great comments coming in here. Lynn Horn says, "Enjoyed hearing you at the Catalina Jazz Club, caring and kind." Wow. And Gregory says, "Rosalind did a disco Disney medley that was wonderful." Oh my God! He <laughs> said he came to the back lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, also asked, do you have a favorite Elvis song? Oh my God. What was my favorite Elvis song? Mm, that's a toughie. Oh. There's so many. Wow. Um, oh, oh, I had to be the ones from my youth. I am nothing but a hound dog. Yeah. Yeah. Crying all the time. <laughs> nothing <laughs> but my hound dog. This is my first influence. <laughs> that's your first influence. Uh, Merlin, who's watching in Ontario, Canada, she said, do you, do you like performing with your sister, with Barbara, of course? I love, I love doing my, did the duet with my sister. We'll do more. <laughs> I hope it happens again. But, you know, it's like she has her career and she's in her place and I'm in mine. And But it would be wonderful. It would be wonderful. I love, we had a great time on the road. My nephew, my sister, we, we traveled, we ate, we went to theater. We, you know, we, uh, sightseeing and and uh, and just it was a marvelous time we, and then we it would end the day with being on stage yeah huh yeah mm. 
Yeah, that's really amazing. Really those beautiful. Were, those were the biggest venues I had ever worked because they were 20,000 seaters and the audiences were so great. And I would walk out and they were like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Marty, who's a singer, he's from originally Australia. He lives in uh, Nashville. He says, I once worked with Florence Henderson and I saw you perform on her show. I could read your mind and it was, wow. Can you read my mind? Uh, yeah. Can you read my mind? Yeah, that's a great, thank you, Marty. I appreciate that very much. That's really, really cool. Um, uh, Merlin goes, it's now or never, which uh, from Elvis. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> writing songs to writing material. Do you enjoy that as well? And and what are some of the inspirations? I, I, I need to get inspired again because I'm so, uh, right now I'm so into healing, you know, this one message that it's, that's what I'm concentrating on. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I haven't written alone. So it's like, I have to have some writing buddies that I like to work with. And, um, you know, and so Light of Love is really the one and only one I've written so far. Yeah. Maybe, maybe there are some more in there, but I haven't. Oh, I think yet. there's Light of Love again. I, um, I absolutely think there is much, much more. You are really something else. And uh, I think people are getting a real understanding that what's, what I love about doing this show, because it's so mm -hmm. conversational and freestyle is uh, that, People know Rosalind, they know the music, they love Rosalind, the performer, and now they're really getting a chance to see the person behind the performance, behind the image. And what's really cool about it is, and refreshing, is the person that is behind the image and behind the performer is one and the same. Rosalind on stage, Rosie is the same. Is who it. Call me Rosie because that's Rosie. Like, yeah. My sister gave me that nickname when I was a kid. I would love to see that on a billboard. Just because I, I feel more like a Rosie than a Rosie. Rosalind. Rosalind. <laughs> with, Rosalind with the E. <laughs> uh, well, you know, growing up on Long Island uh, on, on our block, I, I was Jimmy. <laughs> my father, you know, we're all James, but my father has always used Jim and I'm like the fifth one. So to differentiate the Jim and the Jim, Jimmy and across the street, you know, you had Tommy and Bobby and Susie and Petey and Stevie and, you know, it's either I, E or Y endings to names. And uh, people are discovering and it's being re-enhanced that you're a, a very soulful person. You really are. You've experienced life in so many different ways. Uh, and here you are today, loving and kind and warm with, you know, you could easily be saying, hey, you know, I'm good. I've done pretty good for myself. I'm all right. I'm going to go over here now. You have this in your DNA to really want to uh, make a incredible impact on our world and on others. And this has always been there. The regression made it even more deeper, but it has in recent moments really rise to the surface for you, hasn't it, Roz? Yes. It's, it's, the, it's the thing that is nearest and dearest to my heart. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that has to, you know, I would love to see everybody get to that point. Yeah. Because what a world we would have. We would have heaven on earth. Yes. If everybody yes. Like that. Remember the commercial years ago? I can't remember whether which soda it was for, but we, I want we got to get the world to sing in perfect. It time. was uh, I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect in harmony. harmony. That is uh, remember I, and it was like they held hands across the, the the map of the United States. I'd like to oh. give myself a Coke, Coca-Cola. Coke. Okay, I didn't know if it was Dr. Pepper. It's the real thing. <laughs> Coca-Cola, the real thing. Yes, right, right. Yeah, yeah. If they resurrect that, I can see you right there. <laughs> Gregory C. says, please release more CDs. We love your music and need oh, you, more. Need oh. more of it. Just a couple more quick pictures we have here. That's cool. It's a beautiful day. See, you were even saying it then. <laughs> yeah. That was on my very first album. And I yes. did a video of it. Because yes. Richard, RJ, um, wanted me to bring some of my history. He, you know, he 
talk. He had me talk more about myself in this last show. Richard J. Alexander. Yeah, he's yeah. an amazing talent yeah. himself, isn't yeah, he? Extraordinary. He yeah. Yeah, he has a. He's got a. He's got an ear yeah. and an eye. Yeah. He's, he was made for what he does. He's made for what he does. Here's a cool shot too. This is Rosalind Kind. What a great shot. Yeah. Tell us about that one. That album. That one was my second album on RCA. Yeah. And uh, I had a RCA came after me and they said, uh, well, we're not going to put out the second album until you lose weight. Oh, I, oh, wow. I was, you know, it was always those 10 pounds overweight or whatever. Um, Roger trying to say that um, now? Huh, yeah, that. No I way. Did, I did an Osnivore song on that album. I did, um, I, didn't I do Ziggler and Evans on that album too? Yeah. I believe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was also a political statement when I was a kid, but I don't think I knew exactly why I was doing it at that time. Yeah. Now I would know every reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Um, there's another great shot I think we have here. This one's great. nice. Look at that um, one. That was at the back lot when my sister, one of the night my sister came. That was one of my first performances. Wow. Came. Wow. And then there, of course, with your mom. With mom. That was the night at the Persian room right after my debut when I was 18. Wow. What was that night like for you? You must have just. Wow. Been. It was unreal. I had 17 pieces behind me. We had 26 for the arrangements. I mean, Jonathan Tunick, Harold Wheeler with two of yeah. the, uh, arrangers. Um, David Shire arranged. I mean, I did tunes of my era, tunes from my album, you know, from my records and things with, that were of, of my generation. Yeah. The only ballad I did in that show was um, When I Fall in Love, except I did a takeoff in a medley of, um, oh God, the only torch song that I did. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> a la, somebody wrote about me in Washington, a la Libby Holman. She's <laughs> this song. This, Oh, Sunday kind of love. Sunday kind of love, yes. It's part of my Sunday's medley. Yeah. Which is, you know, taking you know, the history of music by each decade, you know. Which is that's a fantastic way to approach that. And then I did Hair and Promises, Promises. Hair and Promises, Promises. And that's right. Show, I closed the show with Let the Sunshine In with everybody clapping. I was 18. That was. Yeah, that was really. Here's another great shot. Yeah. And Betty Davis came to, to that engagement. Betty Davis did too. Betty Davis came to that engagement. Did you get a chance to see her, talk to her? No, but I had to introduce her because the uh, major d said to me, she loves to be introduced since you have to introduce her. So I did, and she stood up and threw kisses. Good thing she didn't look around and go, what a dump. <laughs> Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, are there people that you would love to do duets with and work with uh, along the way? Those who you've always enjoyed and gee, it would be kind of cool to work with that person or, or do a duet with them. Um, you know what? I haven't thought about it. I haven't thought about it. I, I once sang with Jack Jones. We were on tour. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it was so funny because what song should we do? And the only one he could do was People. I said, but that's my sister. People. Don't you yeah. know something else? Right. Yeah. So the love boat. <laughs> the love boat. boat. No, but the bottom line is I did People with him because that's the one he wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I did when I put, when uh, with Michael Feinstein, I was on one of the ships on a cruise. And one night, uh, the two shows that he did, I came out for a little piece of it and we sang together. Um, but I had, you know, gosh, Shirley Bassey. But I, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, yeah. Did you meet, I, have you met her? I haven't, but oh. I, I was so enthralled by her. I remember yeah. first, the yeah. first time I saw her live with the gowns and the, just the attitude. The incredibly and, uh, unique sound to her yeah. voice and so powerful. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah, absolutely. So but powerful. She came from here. Yeah. You can have powerful vibes and, and you know, uh, chords, but if you don't come from here. No, no. You know? Do you, uh, do you ever go 
come back east? Do you ever go back? I do. To New see, York? My family is there, and I was there the last time I was there. I did Fifty Four Below, that was just at 2015. So it's been yeah. a while. Yeah. And that was the name of my show. That was. A, that was <laughs> It's been a rather kind. It's been a while. I said, "What do you mean by that?" He said, yeah. "It's twenty years." I said, "No, but I just did Brooklyn a year ago." You just did Brooklyn I did a year. Brooklyn College. <laughs> so right. Brooklyn is not Manhattan. <laughs> now the funny point is, if I go back again, it'll be. It's been a while. It's been a while anyway. again. <laughs> <laughs> do you have uh, things coming up, and and when the the pandemic hit everybody it's almost sort of like when when you know obviously when kennedy was shot or pearl harbor or the when 9-11 uh, happened people know when they got the phone call especially those in the arts that everything was coming to a stop and so many people were in the midst of launching things and it was supposed to be like their biggest year ever and there were shows and plays and sold out this that and the other did you have things that were sort of lined up, ready to go that no, stopped? No, I'm just in the studio recording because I wanted to get my, you know, I even turned down a, a gig that was going to take, would have taken me to Israel because I said I've been waiting so long to work on this album and I'm picking songs as I go that, you know, mean something for the moment. It's like I've changed, you know, to do the one song because of the times. Yeah. Um, so it, it's my package, it's me, and it's not being shocked by a record company or whatever. So it, it's all me. I have to produce, I have to promote. <laughs> like, do you like so that? You do, whatever you can do to help me promote it and get it out there. I yeah, that's it. It. yeah, absolutely. Do you enjoy that? Because it's a, it's a unique experience when you're, you know, there's so much of that now where people are having to do their own thing. Yeah. You know, they're working from home, they're on computers, yeah. all this stuff. Uh, do you yeah. enjoy that? Is that a different kind of an experience with my producer online i loved doing the video that we did together yeah night of love yeah and we did that all over to, uh, during uh covid yeah and I, I had a great i just really enjoyed that picking yeah. that looking for the footage and and whatever it was just great but um we can't record that way because there's an echo i have to be there in the studio you have to be in but the now studio I can go back yeah is that uh in the works to get back yeah. into the studio yeah, and a couple times already good. So, good but you know i'm still careful with the masks and everything yeah. you know still there's still not everybody's inoculated i wish they would get inoculated i wish yeah. they wouldn't fear yeah the, the misinformation yeah, yeah. you know yeah. I mean, we're double vaxxed and as we had to yeah. Uh, my friend Patrick McEnroe was on the other night, um, the ESPN tennis commentator and, and brother John. And uh, he said he's, I like what he said. He's vaxxed and relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I'm going to start using that. I'm going to steal that, Patrick. I'm vaxxed and relaxed. It's, it's yeah. funny because uh, there's so many people that don't want to have it. And I, I was never, I don't take, I keep my, um, my immune system up with supplements that I take daily. But so I never took flu shots. If I got a little sick or a cold or I, my, the supplement I take actually doesn't even let me get so blocked when I get a cold. I mean, it's really, yeah. but I, and, but I never wanted to take flu shots. Right. And right. I really put off, I was waiting and I was yeah. waiting. I actually was waiting for my sister to go, can, can we go together when you go? Cause you know, it's like when we did this other thing. In, in case, so right, yeah. much nicer going with my big sister. Right. I go by myself. <laughs> Much more secure. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so she said, sure, you know, but she was taking so much time. And another friend of mine called me up and said, you know, they've got the Moderna at, at Rite Aid. Call, get an appointment. It's listed there now. I just went online. So within that week, he got one. Another friend got hers and I got mine. And I didn't wait. But, yeah. I, you know, and you do it because you don't believe in vaccines, but you have to take the jump because this particular thing Even yeah. both of um, my acupuncturist and my nutritionist yeah and not people that take vaccines and stuff right either but they did yeah. right yeah we're all natural people natural healing but there's been a lot of teachable yeah. moments during all of this year and as i was mentioning to you when we were chatting before we went live i said i think it was sort of, sort of the meeting of several energies it was like the divine mother nature and planet earth came together to say 
enough humans with the violence, the divisiveness, the shootings, the road rage, all of this. We're going to stop this. And we're going to give you a pandemic, economic, civil unrest, political craziness. We're going to do it all at the same time. It hasn't yeah. stopped. No, you know, but, you it know, actually the hasn't. The hatred that has been implanted by what the last four or five years brought on to us and then the, the carry on of the misinformation, I don't understand people. I don't know why you would want to do that. I don't know what the fear is of having other people be part of your country. We got to come together. We got to come together. Yeah. But inside the same, yeah. we come from the same power, the same yeah. universe. Yeah. Yeah. Is in every one of us. When you're divided, you sink. Yeah. yeah. Take a boat. Put it in half, it sinks. Yes. What happened to Rome. To Rome. Yes. And, you know, uh, I just, I, I really, <laughs> and so many people, I think, that passed this these last four years, I think they chose it to because of what we were going through. <laughs> you know, they didn't want to take Have it. Have you noticed all of the folks that oh, passed away? Gosh. I was going to say, wait a minute, did they know something I don't know? Oh, it's gosh. like, uh, it's been unbelievable. Yeah. What are some uh, teachable moments and things you've learned about uh, Razi during the course of the year? We've all had this time to reflect. We've all had time to, I, I was seeing a report actually in my professional work, uh, some television work I was doing today, where they said 40% of the country is going to resign from their jobs and they want to do things now that matter to I them, things that. that make an impact. Mm -hmm. They don't want to just work for the corporation and punch in and punch out. They, well, this is giving the them- The corporation isn't paying you what you deserve for that job. Well, that and the respect do. and the, yeah. yeah and, and that when this time- want to honor everybody. When is the middle class, when are the guys that are on the street going to get help? Right. Everybody, if they got help and were put into a position where they could go out and work, they, they would welcome it. I, I, I go and see the veterans uh, in their tents on San Vicente. Yeah. My heart. I mean, it's like, I just yeah. don't get it. But I also, I don't get the vigilanteism. I don't get the stuff that, that, that some, that even with what's going on, with the storming of our government, and that some people were in the government and in the military that were part of it. Interesting, interesting times, interesting times we're living in. Um, what have you learned about yourself during this time of great pause? Did you, did you clean a lot, a lot of closets and bake a lot of bread? You know, you know what? <laughs> I, I waited till I had my shots and COVID was, you know, and somebody else had their shots because I needed help cleaning out my closet. <laughs> I am now because this is the time to unload. Yes. I have so much stuff that I yeah. wish I didn't, yeah, didn't have. Yeah. But I also never finished my apartment, so I've got to do that. <laughs> but I yeah, I have to unload. I mean, I was I was in the house the whole time. I ordered my groceries in. Yeah. I, I maybe made did an, an errand once a once a week. Yeah. But I was in the house the whole time. But I, I got to do things and watch things that I, you know, I didn't get to do. Exactly. Yeah. And, but, and and that time is coming little by little. When you look at this incredible career and all the people you've worked with and the experiences you've had, Razi, um, what are some of those things that continue to bring you continued blessing and joy to want to do what you're talking about so beautifully and eloquently on this show with me about empowering and inspiring and impacting people's lives? Um, you obviously are somebody who never takes anything for granted. You really understand the fragility of life, the precious moments, the importance of relationships. Uh, you're a brilliant artist who shines and loves to share your talent, but you do it in a way that lifts people up and it's, it's a beautiful thing. What are some of those continued blessings and joys in your life that give you that wherewithal and stamina to wanna to continue to do all of this for the greater good? Well, I'm lucky to have nice supportive friends so that when I get down, you know, because we all, if I'm, you have to meditate and kind of center yourself, but there are days that it gets to be too much. And I'm lucky enough to have some wonderful, beautiful, high end, enlightened friends. Yeah, I see Elizabeth there. Yeah. Hi, Rossi. Looking good. Great to see you. Oh, You're one amazing. Oh, oh, lady. Elizabeth from San Francisco. Hello, yeah. Elizabeth. <laughs> she sends me flowers all the time, but oh. little you know, and cards. 
Oh, that's so nice. Oh, don't spend your money. You need your money. <laughs> <laughs> Ever the caretaker type you are. <laughs> but your friends and uh, yeah. That's yeah. I, and my family. I mean, I take joy in my family. I'm so proud of my niece, my nephew, my great nephew just left to go back. He's, he was here for a couple of nights. So the joy, he's 23. All of my family that have been brought up to give back to the community, to be good to other. We were having a discussion yesterday over lunch and he said, I, I don't like it when people are mean to people, when they, when they hurt people. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, my, and his sister, I mean, everybody is just so loving. It's so yeah. giving their, their laugh, their smile, yeah. you know, the warmth. And I'm just so proud of them all. And so it's like, I don't have to worry. Right. As auntie, you know, and I, I love them because they're like my children because I don't have my own. Right. So they mean that much more, you know, it mean everything to me, but even that much more because of that. Yeah. So I will call them the Kindelach. And, right. they, and they say to me, oh, they left. A Kindelach, I'm 53. He's 60. <laughs> my, I was three years old when my niece was born. So she's, <laughs> you know, and she's like, she left. We're, 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 she's calling us the children. They left. I said, you will always be younger than just remember, <laughs> I, I, my niece was born when I was 10 years old and, and I was in Hebrew school sending a note around that I had just become an aunt. And Jason was born before my 16th birthday. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'm probably the closest in age of all the relatives, you know, the relatives. Of all the relatives, yeah. So I, you know, it's like, I've always felt more like not even aunt, but I love, I don't, I don't mind being called aunt. I love yeah. it. Absolutely. So, yeah, because like you say, family is front and center. Family is so deeply important to you. Um, what are some things you'd still like to do, Rosalind? Are there things that are out there on that sort of Rosy bucket list? Things that you're like, gee, I, and it doesn't even have to be in the arts or entertainment. It could be just things that you want to tackle and take on for yourself. Oh, gosh. I would love to. I would, you know, I would love to share it. I to share one on one with healing and helping people and talking to people. I I think that sometimes I do it with people on the phone that call, you know, that I know or whatever. Um, I've always been a listener. Yeah. I had I had a friend who's no longer with us who was a psychologist, and she used to say to me, "You should be a psychologist." Yes. <laughs> you know. Yes. yes. And, um, I. And I did my own books, my own ta you know, my own records. I keep them. So they yeah. said I should be a roller skating uh, accountant or bookkeeper or something. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't. As I've gotten older, I don't really love doing it anymore. It was a yeah. kick to do fourteen column ledgers by hand before the computer came into being. Oh boy! <laughs> when the computer got confusing, and I still don't love it. And with all the stuff, it gets goes wrong. With the tech, I'm not a, I'm not good at technology, so I can't do anything in that field. <laughs> it's, not, it's not my calling. <laughs> but a little birdie had told me once that was it your your mother or father or both that thought that you might go into like be a Supreme Court justice or something, go into that world. My my father, I was a late in life child. My father was 57 when I was born. My mother was 41. And my father would have liked me to, he used to say to me, I want you to become a Supreme Court justice like Bertie Amsterdam in New yeah. York. Yeah, sure. And my father came here from Tsarist Russia when he was a kid at the turn of the century. Wow. So, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. so, you know, it's like a long life, but he had, he loved Kennedy and he loved, you know, he loved being American. Yeah. And, um, it's quite amazing I, isn't it amazing when you look yeah. at it all yeah and still much more going on so much more to give so much more to share with all of us and what would you say to somebody who um, is looking at Rosalind Kine right now and who's always admired you and has now formed a newfound deeper appreciation of the person behind the music, behind the performances, and they want to go into this line of work as well. Obviously it's changed and morphed dramatically over the years. Um, what would you say something inspiring to somebody watching right now who is considering doing that? 
love yourself enough to be able to take the knocks that this business can hand you. God willing, hopefully you won't have those, but you have to be prepared and ready for anything, but you have to be strong. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the hardest part to be indignant, something to fight for. So I had, that was a big lesson for me. I'm still not demanding enough. You know? uh, I wish I were, but I'm not. So I, I, was I also, will not do that. I okay. I will. Okay. I will. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's so important to fight for yourself and fight for what you feel is right and uh, to stand up and, you know, no matter how much you want to make something, I've never been able to like put somebody else down for me to, to get a position. To, to get ahead, right? Yeah. Me neither, me but neither, no. If it was meant for me to have it, the good Lord would bring it in my path. Well, it's been doing that uh, all these years, uh, Rosalind, and uh, you really are a blessing. And I, I toast you. Uh, I don't know if you have anything there, but I have uh, my water. Oh, that's a, my well, water. See what well, it this looks like a fancy, expensive martini glass, but there's water in it, so we're good. <laughs> see what the cup says? Cheers. Oh, let's see if we can get a uh, full screen shot of that. What does the cup say? Speak your kind. I love that. That is perfect. <laughs> so speak your kind. That is so apropos. That is so perfect. Uh, it's so always important to have kindness in your heart. Yes. Uh, we empathy, compassion. Because the, I, effort, for the grace of God could be you, me, whoever. And we exactly. all deserve each other's care and warmth. I agree 110%. I talk about that a lot on this series, but I also talk about it in my professional work in TV and radio. And I, I talk about it all the time in life. Um, I think we're very, very much kindred spirits in that way and the way that we think about life. And we've had the, um, the wonderful opportunity growing up in the New York area to have exposure to all different kinds of people, all different kinds of viewpoints, all different kinds of positions and, and all of that. And it makes for such a rich experience. Uh, and I think that has only added to your ability and capability to relate to and express with so many people and see everybody as one, just like I do as well. And it's a really beautiful and, and sometimes, depending on where you travel to, a unique thing. Most definitely. We're the lucky ones. We're the yeah. lucky ones. We are. And somebody that was uh, joining me as my sidekick tonight just wanted to uh, send you his best. Mr. George Burns was in the house. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Never got to work with him, huh? <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. I got to work with Bob Hope. Yes, you did. That's I right. Bob Hope and Danny Thomas. What was that like? Legends. Uh, well, you know, what happened was I it was a concert at Pikes Peak Turf Club the summer of my first year of my first show before I did the Persian Room. And um, Bob Hope, it was Bob Hope, myself, and the new Christy Minstrels. Oh, sure. And yeah. Bob, Bob had just, Bob had me do a number with, you know, he's delightful, the lovely. And he did lines about my mother or something. He pulled out. He was so <laughs> cute. I loved it. And then um, he lost his second brother that week. So he had to go, and Danny Thomas came in to fill in for him. Yes. So I had the two of them in the one week, and then I did a St. Jude fundraiser for Danny Thomas because my then, one of my other musical directors who is now gone, Norman Mamie, his family was very connected with St. Jude, and so um, I did a fundraiser for them, for Danny. Have you had a chance to do a lot of charitable work over the years too? Um, I, I, I would do more. I would yeah. do more. I, you know, I'm giving and I've given to the, the puppy stuff because of losing my puppy and I gave yeah. it a really good memory. My little, my little Joshy. Yeah. I'm not been able to get another puppy, but I, I get my love from my great four legged nephew, Eli. That's Jason's puppy. What and kind of uh, puppy is he? He's an Australian lab, uh, Labradoodle. Ah, oh, they're beautiful, yeah. huh? And love, oh my God. The love. I went with him when he picked him up. He was this big. And he, you know, now he's like, now, now he's not humongous because he was a miniature. But the love 
the love. He would go on my shoulders and eat my hair. And he <laughs> I was like, uh, when we first, when he first got in my head, I said, "Can I come over? I need my Eli fix." <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, that's what you call unconditional love, right? Yeah, that would. Could, I always say, can humans learn a lot from the animal kingdom? Yes. Well, you know, that's what I've been saying to everybody that uh, has been, you know, struggling through a lot of depression, and anxiety, all that through the pandemic and everything. He said, go out and surround yourself with things that are constant. Get out into nature, go to a garden, go into a forest. For me, my Zen place, you know, growing up on the island and being here, you know, along the New England coast as well. The ocean, the water is a real Zen place for me. Uh, swimming, surfing, boogie boarding, just being near the ocean, the rhythm, the tide, the sun setting, the sun rising. The sun starts, comes out of the ocean and sets in the ocean and it's a rhythm and a tide and a constant that has existed well before you and I and will be there well after. So when it seems like things are getting crazy and unfamiliar and out of control, Go to the constants in life, those things yes. that still exist. And, and the sound of the tide coming in and going out. Is... My other my other favorite place, my number one, is Sedona. Oh, like yes. Stupa. Have you ever been to Sedona, gone to the stupa to meditate? You know, uh, my, place. my friend is Glenn Scarpelli from One Day uh -huh. at a Time, and he was a guest oh, on the show, it. too. And he has said I should come out to yeah. visit because it's uh, – uh, I've never been to Sedona, but I just hear nothing right. but. Uh, it is so spiritual. All the vortexes. The yeah. labyrinth. I have a, the picture of the labyrinth on my uh, Instagram, on one of my pictures. The labyrinth. And uh, I, I got, I, the last time I was there, I went to the stupa every day. I just, you know, I did my prayers, I did everything, and I just vegged. I mean, it's just a good feeling, a great feeling. My, I have a dear friend that lives there too, and I did the, um, I performed at the Sedona Film Festival in 2017, and uh, yeah. it just, I love it. I love it up there. I Do you just, meditate daily? I was for a while. I've gotten a little lax lately, but I have. You know, I ask because uh, during the pandemic, I was talking to the four walls. Uh, yeah. Or yelling at the TV. And, and were they, well, were the four walls? Got a little echo. Were and the so four walls know, talking back? No. <laughs> and then I got a little echo and I started talking to Alexa. Yeah. So I was saying to play me, you know, metaphysical med meditation music to sleep, to, you know, to focus, to whatever. And I have a bunch of pics on my, uh, on my computer as well. That's incredible. I, I was, it wasn't for a couple of years. I went to a class every day. Ugh. Nothing. Really, I love the sound baths. Have you ever been to a sound bath? No, I have friends that have, but oh that's, my God. that's a must, good. isn't it? Oh, yeah. the best. You recommend the that. Best. Do you, you know, you're the, just listening to this conversation. You're as much you are a storyteller. You're a teacher too, a, te a teacher and a healer in many different ways. Did you ever consider teaching? Uh, you know, in any way, shape, or form, teaching others? Not really. I mean, you know, if I get to know somebody and somebody opens up to me, it's like just like we're having a conversation. It's like a one-on-one, right. -on -one and they'll say, you know, and if their parents or they they have a, a thing with their parents that they're not getting on or they don't understand each other, and then the mother will say to me, my God, she listened to you, but she won't listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> Whatever help I can be. <laughs> That's it. That is funny. That's what it is. <laughs> well, you're amazing, Rozzy. And uh, I can't believe that we've had an opportunity to chat, you know, in this way and just let it flow. And uh, you are a super talent, beautiful inside and out. You're a great inspiration. And I just want to show you a couple of the comments from some of the folks, our lovely viewers around the world. Gary, who's watching in Iowa, USA. Thank you. Lovety. Rosalind, you're now one of our, you're one of our loveties. Oh, Isn't that cool? Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for spending time Do with us. Can I get a pin? It says lovely. Yes, I think we're going to have pins and mugs and all oh, kinds of stuff. We got to okay. get you a pin. It says love and kindness you can send me. Absolutely. Well, like everything. <laughs> yeah. Lovety and kindness. Uh, Christine Clifton's in North Carolina. She says, choose to be kind. I do believe love wins. A very enlightening conversation. Thanks for your beautiful words of wisdom, Rosalind, our newest great 
Lovety. Uh, and uh, Elizabeth, I think you mentioned she's in San Francisco yep. area. I really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you for having Rosie on as your guest. She is wonderful. And I agree. Uh, Mary's in Florida, Mary Bishop. She says, uh, this was a fantastic conversation. Take care, Roslyn Merlin in Ontario, Canada. Thank you, Roslyn. It's been a pleasure. You take Thank care. You Juanita in South Africa, one of our regular Lovety viewers. This was a lovely conversation. Thank you, Roslyn, for your time and sharing your life stories with us. Uh, Thank you, Elizabeth all. says, uh, her last name is so true, kind. Rosie is one of the kindest, most down to earth people I know. So gracious, a true blessing to us all. And uh, Christine says, love yourself and love others. Uh, Rosie and I agree with that. And um, I love it. Yeah, good Thank stuff. You. And uh, and Charles you. Evans says, come see us again at Feinstein's. Okay. <laughs> <At> Nico. <laughs> cool stuff. Ross, thank you very much for joining my us pleasure. on the thank show. You. Thank oh, you for having me. Uh, my pleasure. You be well. You keep you well. Uh, hope to stay in touch. And you are definitely welcome back anytime. We will keep the porch light on for you. And I hope uh, the show met whatever expectations you had and that you enjoy the time with me as much as I have with I you. I didn't come into it with expectations. I just yes. came into it. Even when I, when I did put my one post up, I said, join the fun. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> That's what I say too. Come join the fun. I'm so pleased, and this was a lovely hour. And I thank you so much. You are a wonderful host. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, my father in New York has always said, whenever anybody says something kind to you, tell him to uh, put it in writing and address it management. <laughs> <laughs> That's his Irish humor. <laughs> Thank you, Rosalind. A Thank blessing. You. And I wish you nothing but all the best. And we'll see you again soon that when you're performing. Uh, we'll catch you at one of the performances as well. Okay. Thank you. Please do. Anytime. Take care. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye the one and only. Rosie, Rosalind Kind on the Gym Master Show Live. We thank her so very much for the uh, time and the attention, the kindness, and what a great conversation. Again, as we mentioned, uh, we go a little old school here. We like to bring in conversations that sometimes go deep, uh, inspiring conversations, great entertainment, uh, light, love, and levity. And here you had an opportunity to learn a little bit more about somebody that you were probably a fan of for years. Maybe you learned about her for the first time, possibly, but uh, you know her music, you know her performances, you know her history, and now you know a little bit more about the person. And that, I think, is a beautiful thing. And, you know, I've always liked to do that in my professional work on this show and everywhere is to have these kinds of freestyle conversations where you go in many different directions, you learn about one another. And the viewers watching live get a chance to learn a little bit more as well. She's a very passionate person, very spirited person. And what a great sense of humor. She's got that New York dry wit, which I love, which I'm very familiar with as well. And I just take a look, just scrolling through some of these amazing photos of there. Of course, she is with her, her sister, Barbara. And, uh, She's uh, carved out her own niche. This we were talking about too, uh, a very, very important project. And this as well. Uh, these are to be found at CD Baby. Just so you know, you can find these at CD Baby, uh, which is really something special. I think you'll really enjoy that. Also, um, in addition to that, um, you can find her, of course, online. And uh, Save the Country, Light of Love, available now on CD Baby, both of them. You just go to the CD Baby store and go under Roslyn Kind, and you'll find them there. Both songs are available digitally across the board as well on iTunes, uh, Amazon, YouTube, Spotify, CD Baby as well. And what a great story about the fact that, um, you know, this particular project goes back years and years and years and it hadn't been recorded and now is available as is save the country. And there's a, a really cool video that goes along with that uh, as well. And again, I encourage you, I've seen and heard all the material and I really encourage you to, to go to those online platforms and scoop it up. Um, 
scoop up all of her material. It, it'll make you feel really, really good. Um, Juanita says, great episode again. Thanks, Jim. Good night, everyone. You as well. Gary saying, good night, Jim and all loveties. You as well. Uh, gang, we love all of you. And don't forget uh, to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. Click the notification bell so you don't miss any of our daily episodes of our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series, The Jim Masters Show Live. We always say when we wrap up the show, don't forget to smile. Don't forget to share the lovity and find your Zen place. This is on the South shore of Long Island, New York. That's the Atlantic Ocean, actually. Robert Moses Beach and State Park on Long Island. And um, my Zen ultimate is, of course, with family and friends, which you heard uh, Rosie mention. Family is uno, numero uno for her and fa family and friends, they, that tops everything. That's the number one Zen place. Then my work, of course, uh, I love cycling and tennis and, and music and writing. The ocean. You got to drag me out of the ocean, swimming, surfing, boogie boarding, sailing. My work in television and radio, on air, on camera, stage, film, all of it. That's another Zen place for me too over the years. Absolutely love that. Um, so find your Zen place. And something else we always say on the show, don't forget to love one another. It doesn't matter your zip code, your income, your height, your weight, your success level, uh, your gender, political views, religious views, any of it. Everybody's welcome to join us here at the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Life Sales Talk Show Series. And don't forget to relax. Love one another and important, love yourself. Even I had to learn and relax. Even I had to learn to put the oxygen mask on me first before running and jumping to help the world. I still run and jump to help the world, but you got to put the oxygen on you first so you can do that. Uh, the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series is available for you live, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. If you missed any episodes of our series, guess what? Don't fret. They're all available 24-7, including this episode with the incredible Rosalind Kind, 24-7, 365 on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. So check that out. And we thank you very much for all of the love, the support, the tagging, the sharing, the subscribing to the channel and all the cool things you guys have been doing. You mean the, the world to us. And we thank you very much. Mary Bishop says another fun night. Thanks, Jim. Good night, everyone. Good night to all of you. Uh, we will be here tomorrow with wonderful comedy writer as well as a comedian and actor. Jeffrey Mark is going to be with us tomorrow. All excited about that. And then uh, the Aussie crooner himself, Marty Thompson, is going to be with us Friday on Saturday, live from Paris. Yes, this is the great grandnephew of legendary French actor Maurice Chevalier. This is Alexis Chevalier. He is a brilliant actor himself. He's with us on Saturday afternoon on the Gym Masters show live as well. Monday, the one and only Judy Norton, brilliant actress, is going to be with us Monday. You remember her, of course, from the Waltons and so much more. Tuesday, Marion Ross, Mrs. C from Happy Days, is going to be with us on Tuesday with her son, with her son, Jim, who's an amazing actor and impressionist, voice artist as well. Together, they're going to be on our show on Tuesday. And so many more great people. Uh, and I'm going to be doing some on-location shows, some more of those. And our host viewer, Lovety Chats. I know you guys love when I do the surprise pop-up shows. We're going to do more of those with you uh, as well. Thanks for joining us, gang. We'll be back tomorrow uh, with Jeffrey Mark, live at 7 Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, here on Jim Master Show Live. We love you all. You take care and be well. And thanks for joining us. Have a good night. Mm -hmm.